Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level Further Maths. Here we're looking at an introduction to volumes of revolution so we can answer questions from exercise 5a. Now how are we going to do this volumes of revolution? Well what we're going to effectively do is take an integral to find the area between the curve and the x-axis and then rotate that around the x-axis by 360 degrees or 2 pi radians to form effectively lots of little cylinders um, and then the sum of those will equal the sum of the revolution effectively. So the revolution is going to be around the x-axis and the volume is going to be calculated by doing a bit of integration and working out the area of the cylinders. Let's see how this um, equation effectively works. Um, what we'll, we'll look at is creating a formula that we can um, use to plug equations into to help us find volumes of revolution. Now if we were to just start off with this nice basic example here of y equals the square root of x, we all know that integration between the limits of b and a um, will give us the area defined by the um, the boundary of the uh, square root of x line, the x-axis, and the two boundary um, vertical lines of a and b. So that's how we work out the area between the two curves, between the curve, sorry, and the line. And the volume of revolution is going to be calculated by rotating this around in a third axis dimension um, by 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees round. So this effectively creates a... Um, a volume there that we can calculate. Okay, so this is what it roughly looked like here from a, from a different perspective. So it's going to create a um, it's going to create a solid a solid shape that we're going to work out the area of. Okay, so what is the formula that we need to work this out? Well, if we take any curve y equals f of x then the volume, um, if we take a boundary of x, is the volume all the way down if we use an integration symbol. What we can do is we can find a, um, a finite uh, volume by taking x and the next boundary up, and we'll, we'll call this a very small space, um, we'll increase the distance along the x-axis by a very small amount, we'll call this delta x. So delta x is the increase in the x-coordinates further along the x-coordinate than where the x is originally. This is going to be a small change in x. Delta x always represents uh, a small change in x. Um, and this is going to represent a small volume. And what we'll then do is add all of those small volumes up to create the whole volume of our shape that we're looking at. So, what we're looking to do here is to find the um, area between the curve and the x-axis first, and then we'll think about creating a cylinder with that. So we have coordinates x, f of x at this point here, and we have coordinates x plus delta x um, and f x plus delta x. Um, the reason it's f of x is because the curve is equal to f of x and y is the y-coordinate, so y can now be used as f of x. Okay, so what we're going to do then is find a, um, a volume of a cylinder that's going to be slightly smaller than the actual volume of the cylinder here. So we're going to effectively use this coordinate here and create then a cylinder around here. Now remember, the formula for a cylinder is the area of the circle times by, um, times by the depth of that circle. So it's going to effectively be um, f of x squared... Uh, times pi, that's the area of the circle, and that, that will be times by delta x, which is the depth of the circle there. This has come straight from the volume of a cylinder being pi r squared, the circle, times by the depth, the height of the, um, the, height of the cylinder. So the volume of this very uh, slightly smaller cylinder is going to be um, pi times f of x squared, which is the, um, the radius of our circle, times delta x, which is the depth of our cylinder. And the actual volume is going to be greater than this, because as we've seen here, we've created something that's slightly of a smaller volume than the actual cylinder. What we can do is also take a maximum here as well. So we'll take um, 
uh, a greater volume than is actually required um, for this cylinder here. So we'll take this using the points up here. So this time the volume is going to be smaller than this volume here. So it's going to be smaller than pi times f of x plus delta x uh, times by the um, delta x depth of the um, cylinder there. So this second volume that we've calculated here is going to be um, bigger than the actual volume that we're looking for here. So what we can therefore effectively do is put the actual volume in between two inequalities, one where we had the smaller cylinder and one where we had the larger cylinder. And what we're going to do there is apply limits. So we're going to apply it as delta x tends towards zero. Um, this delta x here, that's the change in x. So as we make this cylinder width very, very, very small, we'll see here that delta x will tend towards zero. We're going to first divide by delta x on both sides. That's a small change in x, so it's definitely positive. So we don't have to worry about reversing those signs. We're going to let delta x now tend towards zero. As we do this, the notation changes from deltas to d's in this uh, differential here now and delta x is going to tend towards zero. So we're going to be creating several very small strips rather than one big strip of a cylinder. So apply it delta x uh, is great is tend to and tending towards zero. And we can see here now that this here, this part of the right hand side of the um, inequality here effectively disappears now. It's, uh, if it tends towards zero, it's so small that it doesn't really matter when approximating f of x. So now, given that we have the same thing on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we can say now that the um, dv by dx is equal to pi times f of x squared times up by the, um, the, del the dx, and then integrate both sides, and we get the volume of the um, shape that we're trying to find, the volume that we're trying to revolve around the x-axis is equal to this formula here. And this is what you have to remember. You don't have to remember all this derivation. All you have to remember is that it's the um, integral of pi times f of x squared del dx. Okay, so it's integral pi symbol, your function squared dx. Okay. So this here is how we get the total volume of the volume of revolution. Okay. So you can see here we can also factor out pi, which just makes the formula a little bit more easier to work with. We can just do all of the maths and times by pi right at the end. Um, notice how we're going to have to have two boundaries either side of our uh, cylinder here, so we know where we're integrating in between. B and A will have to be involved in the integrating um, boundaries there. And a slightly easier notation to remember it by is pi integral B A Y squared DX, where Y is equal to F of X. But generally, that's a standard bit of notation that you won't really have to remember. This here is how I would remember the volume of revolution formula. OK, let's now have a look at a question and applying the formula that we've learnt up here. The diagram on the right hand side shows the region R that's bounded by the y axis, the x axis and the curve y equals 9 minus x squared. The region is rotated 360 degrees around the x axis, so just like that, um, find the exact volume of the solid generated. OK, so what we first need to do is to find these boundaries, the B marker up here and the A marker down here so that we've got two boundaries to integrate between. We can probably notice here that it's pretty quickly going to be at x equals 3. Minus 3 will be on the other side, but that's not um, important to us in this question here. And we can obviously see it crosses the um, y-axis at the top there, so the x point is going to equal zero. So we're going to have an upper boundary of three, a lower boundary of zero. And then what we have to do next is substitute all of the values in. So B is three, A is zero, we've got that. Y is equal to nine minus X. So what we're going to integrate is nine minus X, and in brackets we're going to square that next, times by DX. 
So all that's next to follow is just a bit of expanding brackets, and this is what we get here. Then apply the integration. So remember, it's increase the um, power of x by 1, divide by the new power. So x squared, that's going to become x cubed, divide by 3, so we'll get 6. x to the 4 is going to become x to the 5, but then divide by 5, so we get x to the 5 over 5. And remember, the way that we plug in this 3 and the 0 is we substitute in 3 first into all of these positions here, and then we subtract 0 being substituted in. So work out the value of 3 being substituted in, and then subtract the value of 0 being substituted in, and calculate that value. Now, generally, you should be able to write your final answer in terms of pi, because it should be continually at the front of all of your calculations as you go through doing all this maths. So 648 pi over 5 is our final answer. All right, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this one out. All right then, well done for having a go at this question here then. So the first thing for us to do is to find the boundary, obviously the first one's gonna be zero, of this term here. Now it's either going to be 5 or uh, maybe 1, so 5 plus 4 times 5 minus 5 squared. Yeah, I've worked it out as 5, because that will be 0 eventually. So you don't need to do any sorts of fancy maths. You could maybe um, factorise this as a quadratic and then solve it. But if you can spot that it's 5, then just spot that it's 5. OK, so what we need to do then is integrate between 5 down to 0 of 5 plus 4x minus x squared, all squared, dx. Okay, so what is this when we expand the brackets? Well, let's write it all out. 5 plus 4x minus x squared times by 5 plus 4x minus x squared, dx. Okay, expand the brackets now, and we'll get 25 plus, that's that, plus 20x uh, minus 5x squared. The next part, that's plus 20x. We're expecting nine parts here, three by three, obviously. Um, plus 20x plus 16x squared minus 4x cubed. And the last part, minus 5x cubed squared minus 4x cubed and then plus 4x to the 4 dx, great. Okay, so let's tidy this up a little bit now. 25, and let's look at the x's, 20, 40, that's all we need, 40x. Uh, x squared minus 5, plus 16, that's 11x squared, minus another 5, so that'll be plus 6x squared. Let's look at the x cubed now, minus 4, minus 4, so that's minus 8. And then we've got a single x to the 4 at the end. Okay, so we're now in a position where we can now integrate. Whoops, we've all forgotten that we need to times by pi at the front of all of this stuff here. So apologise. Right, so let's now integrate. So it's going to be um, 25x plus... No, it's going to be x squared and divide by 2, so that's going to give us 20. And then increase that power by 1, so it would be x to the 3, divide by 3, and we'll get 2. Minus, increase the 3 to a 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then x to the 5, all over 5. And here we're going to integrate this in between boundary of 5 and 0. Now, when I substitute in 0 into all of this, I'm just going to end up with um, 0. So really, I just need to substitute in 5. Um, so bear with me while I type this out on my calculator. Uh, minus 2 times 5 to the 4 plus 5 to the 4. And as far as I can see, we get 250 times pi. Take away zero, effectively. So that's our final answer there. So that is the exact volume of the solid generated 
when it says exact volume of the solid generated, the word exact here just means that your answers need to be in terms of pi, maybe a square root three or square root two. It could involve a square root, basically. Um, all it's saying is that there should be no decimals, there should be no rounding, um, because when you round, it's therefore not exact anymore. So 250 pi is the exact answer to our question here. Right then, so have a go at lots of questions from exercise 5a then. This certainly isn't the most difficult of the bunch. It's only question two. You want to be seeking out the difficult questions so you can be challenging yourself and making sure that you know um, each different type of question that can appear so you're fully prepared when a test or an exam comes around or when you're faced with a more difficult question. Right, thanks very much for watching.